Ah yes, the age-old question of, should I go to a film school or should I go to a photography school? You know, it's a good question, and in some cases, yes, and in other cases, no. So let's dissect this, shall we? So what are the true pros and cons of attending a film or photography school nowadays? Is it worth it? There are a few educational models that you can choose from nowadays to get yourself to the level that you want to attain in your career. You know, each of these have merits and drawbacks. No time in history prior really have we had so many opportunities available to us to forge our own educational path. So first up is learning on your own. This would be like the free or nearly free route, not including paid for online training in this. This would be more like you going to the library, researching topics, finding books and articles out there for free, maybe watching YouTubes. It's certainly the least expensive option for learning new things, but there are some drawbacks. For one, the material may be outdated. For two, maybe you are in an area without an awesome library. And for three, maybe you just don't know where to look to learn. And finally, piecing together an education can be overwhelming, and it takes massive discipline from you to put together a curriculum that makes sense about a topic that maybe you don't really know enough about in the first place to make a curriculum about. So I'd call this first stage really the trial date. You know, you're, you're getting to know the subject. You are looking for the romantic parts as well as the red flags, such as, will I like being X, Y, or Z? Or like, will I like being a food photographer? Or will I like being a first AC pulling focus on a film set for 16 hours a day? Those questions are important as you learn about any trade. And reading and forums are a great place to gain this kind of insight before dipping into the deeper end. For example, when I became interested in location sound mixing, I spent a lot of my free time years, in fact, reading a blog by a location sound mixer by the name of Jeff Wexler. Have you seen Spaceballs or Almost Famous, seen Independence Day or Vanilla Sky? That sound guy. So he has this forum where a community of other sound professionals have contributed for years. And I read two books on location sound, and then I began to get kind of a feel for what this career is really like, the jargon, the trials and tribulations of someone working in this department, just by reading this forum and some books. It's really been valuable to me in understanding the nature of the profession, but also really valuable in terms of getting certain technical questions answered as I began to do this work. So between books and JW Soundform, I was taking this profession out on a date, many dates really, before committing. Online training. So this is a hot one because, well, you can learn a lot from home. You know, all you need is a computer or a phone, really, and internet access and a bit of money to pay for the training. There are myriad platforms these days to choose from. Some good, some great, some mediocre. You know, I can say from having learned a lot from a variety of them, there's often at least a little nugget of wisdom found in even the lesser of these. You know, no matter what, I can usually glean something from them. But I've also bought some from the big dogs and, you know, been somewhat disappointed. So I guess you could say that the drawback of online learning could be that sometimes it could be a crapshoot, right? Online learning also doesn't really provide like a community typically that is local to you that you could depend upon or have coffee with or maybe rent gear from. You know, everybody's like spread out. But even so, if there's a community connected to the training, that could be a valuable resource to you to gain other wisdom nuggets. A big benefit of online training is the ability for you to access that information over and over to review it or solidify that knowledge. But learning online does take discipline. You know, you got to pay attention and apply the lessons. Workshops. You know, I once took a workshop in Maine, and one of my fellow students was basically spending months up in this little town taking weekly workshops, one right after another. This was in the 1990s, and he theorized that rather than spend 20 grand or more on a traditional film or photo school, he'd just take workshops, one right after the other, get specific training from each. I wish I had this guy's contact info to see how that really panned out for him. So honestly, this would be what I would call like the not necessarily cheap, but maybe the most fun route. Well, you know, what he wasn't getting, though, was like a connected community of peers. He was meeting new people every week, and that sort of disconnect could maybe be a hurdle later in that who you know category. Sort of like a transient existence, but at a workshop facility. He no doubt gained a lot of knowledge and a variety of it, though. Traditional schooling. Okay, so what will traditional schooling get you? We'll, we'll break this up into a couple categories. Like, there's the short like one year or two year intensive kind of thing. And then there's the four year degree program, you know, like bachelor's kind of degree program. Full stop though, I will tell you right now that in my 25 years of being in this industry, not a single person has ever asked me if I had a degree or what school I went to. It seemed basically irrelevant. 
you know, my skills, knowledge, how I've conducted myself in pre-production, on set, my portfolio, really all seem to be only the things that really truly matter. So it makes the most sense that you seek a program that has instructors who have done these sorts of things. When I went to photography school decades ago, I was very much interested in learning the most from the instructors who had done what it is that I wanted to do. I gleaned nuggets from the other instructors, of course, but I made sure to corner the ones who either were still actively engaged in the field I was interested in, which was commercial photography, or that they had spent their career there. So as far as choosing a school, my first advice would be to first determine what it is you think you'd like to do, and then find a school that has instructors who have done that, because then they can advise you directly on the best path forward. You know, if you're looking at being a freelance filmmaker and the school's instructors are all MFA folk who haven't really made too many films, maybe they haven't been freelancers um, or really, really been on set too much in some role, it would be very hard for them to show you the path. If your own goal is to get an MFA and be an instructor like them, well, then a program full of MFAs will be a great choice. But if your goal is to be a freelance wedding or portrait photographer, let's say, then finding a school that has instructors in that genre will really be beneficial to you. And if you find the school that you're looking at has a lot of instructors who basically graduated that same school the year before, I'd take pause if I were you. Because not that they aren't good instructors, but when the question finally comes up of, okay, now where do I go from here? they won't really be speaking from experience. It'll be just regurgitated info that they heard from someone else. So learn from those who have been there and you won't go wrong. As far as the pros of these programs, honestly, if you want to teach at the university level, you'll need a degree, most likely the MFA. I had one professor advise me once, hey, if you want to teach, find a bachelor's program that you, that you can complete like as easily and as soon as possible, then apply to the MFA. Like basically, shortcut yourself to the MFA. But now if you want to work as an artist or tech in the fields of photography, video, filmmaking, etc., you may be better off with a shorter form program because what those programs do give you is a ton of information. However, often it's more than you can really digest and you might be drinking through the fire hose, as they say. You know, it's usually really intense, so you often get intense behavior from peers, parties, interpersonal relationships, and all the drama that goes with it. But you usually get some lifelong friendships with it. I'm still friends with many of the people that I went to school with back then. What short intensives and degree programs can give you, though, that books and online training cannot, really are connections. Direct connections in person to people in the field. Again, assuming the school has working professionals teaching there. So you first have to figure that out. Those connections can lead to assisting gigs or internships or connections to other people in the field looking for someone who's fresh out of school. You know, the chief drawback of these programs, however, is that they are expensive. So if you've got tens of thousands of dollars kicking around to blow and that won't be a big deal, go for it. But if you're going to be going into debt, buyer beware. You will want to be vigilant about the school you choose, who your instructors will be, where they have been, what sort of access you have to them, and what the school might offer in terms of pointing you in the direction, a good direction after you graduate. Some just take your money and say goodbye, you know, and others might give you some direction. So look into that. In many cases, though, the online training model, of course, is inexpensive and can get you specialized knowledge that you need on specific topics of interest. My recommendation is to take your idea, your dream occupation out on a date. Re read as many books as you can on the topic. Find forms. Really take to heart the parts of their story where they're telling you the good parts and the bad parts of the job. And be realistic with yourself about, like, are you a go-getter type person or are you better to be employed by another? Read forums, read blogs, research on your own the subject that you are keen on before you take the next step. And then from there, if you have this insight, that'll kind of let you know what skills are missing. And at that point, you might then be able to say, take online learning to kind of fill in some of the gaps of some of the skill sets that you feel are missing to get to the next level. You may discover at some point that you do need a traditional short intensive program or that you really do need a degree to do what it is you want to do next. But just know that to work in the fields of photography or video or filmmaking and their adjacent support crew occupations, you absolutely do not need a college degree. To teach at a university, you almost always do. So look at any school you wish to attend and ask yourself, are the instructors there seasoned professionals or are they just graduates of the same program? Do they have the experience to actually mentor me? Those will be the most important questions for you in choosing a program or college. So if you liked the message of this video, please consider 
hitting that like down there. Hit the subscribe if you want to hear more from me. You know, it helps the channel grow. Um, I started this channel mainly because I, you know, have been working in these fields for, geez, uh, you know, almost 25 years and um, continue to do so. And I have felt that, you know, maybe I could offer some things. I have been an educator for probably a good decade of that, um, at times part time and at times full time. And uh, that's why I decided to start this channel is to uh, share some of the knowledge that I have and put some of my nuggets of wisdom out there for other people to digest and open up dialogue with people who maybe have had similar experiences or different experiences, uh, you know, any and all above. Please feel free to comment down there if you've got something to say. Um, I typically will respond and I appreciate it and I appreciate you and I appreciate you coming and taking the time to watch this video and learn from me. See you again.